right. And before we start, before you say, oh, that's not Rory, it's Wurzel Gummidge. Blame Lydia. She said, yeah, let the hair out, but this is why I don't. As you can see, it's all over the gaff. Yeah, next month I'm getting it all shaved. But yeah, anyway, blame Lydia for that one. But Chris Cornell, this is again for Lydia Day. Chris Cornell, I will always love you. Now, I saw this little gem hiding in the email. As soon as I saw it, I was like, got to be done. It's got to be done. Like, I can already hear Chris's voice on this. Um, so, yeah, let's go. I never do one more. I just learned this. So when I, when I mess it up, just uh, forgive me. This gives me the same vibe as the um, when we did the Elvis live performance and he just pulls out, um, what was it Love Me Tender? No, Lonesome Tonight. But this would be the same type of deal that you take your missus, like, come on, let's go and see Chris Cornell. And the set's going fine. She's loving it. Do you know what I mean? And then all of a sudden he pulls out this song. Like this is a song that just, do you know what I mean? Hits into the heart of every female. This song for some reason is, yeah, a, a female anthem. 
and well not for some reason it's obvious why but yeah but you could just imagine taking your girlfriend out and then all of a sudden you just look at her and Chris is singing do you know I mean doing the big note of I will always love you and you're just watching your girl basically fall in love with Chris Cornell and like I said with the Elvis thing like you'd be in the crowd looking at Chris Cornell going Chris kill it Chris yeah That was crazy. That was crazy. Like, that really shows you, because that as well as being a kind of a female anthem, that's a big note to hit. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know that song so well. Everybody knows that song so well. It's just one of them songs that's kind of woven into our, the fabrics of our society or the DNA of our society. But, you really see Chris's power in that. And you really see how he can hold that note. Like, that was amazing. I mean, I, obviously, I know Chris is an amazing singer, but to pull off something like that with that type of power and that type, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. That was unbelievable. Truly unbelievable. He smashed it. Smashed it. But like I say, as soon as I saw it in the email, I just thought, I've got to do that. I've got to do this song. Like, I, yeah. I could, I could already hear it, but imagining it was nowhere near hearing it. Hearing it was so much better. And like I say, that's not a song like I'd sing. Uh, I'd sing. That's not a song I'd listen to but it's a bit like Billy Jean I've not I've never really been a fan of Michael Jackson ever like I don't really like Michael Jackson but Chris Cornell's Billy Jean is unreal right and yeah I wouldn't listen to this song normally but yeah Chris Cornell with Chris Cornell doing it I'm I'm there yeah, that was fire. Fire. And it really shows you as well. Like I said, that's such a big, famous song that you can overlook the writing on it. But when you hear it kind of like that, that type of version, you hear the writing, how good the writing actually is on that song. And and then also it makes sense then why the song is as big as it is, because the writing's great. Like I say all the time, you can... You can dress a song up to look like anything, but if the songwriting's poor, the song's poor. 
It doesn't matter what you do to it. It doesn't matter whether you aggressively rock it up. It doesn't matter. If the song's just not good, the song's not good. But you could hear it now that that's just great songwriting. Great songwriting. Yeah, that was fire. I loved that. Loved it. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet.